I tried a different angle today. Kind of like it, kind of like it, a little different. Normally I'm, I'm coming from this way, today I'm coming from this way. I don't know, let's just switch it up, you know what I mean? Sometimes you need some change in your life. Uh, mug, mug time, mug time. This is actually um, a mug that I purchased for Chanel to use at my house because she loves cats. But I mean, technically cat could use it as well. Um, but I think Chanel used it mainly. So anyway, let's chat about the battle for Los Angeles. Back from the dead. Now we're back from the dead. So today is February 23rd. The main reason that I wanted to do this topic for the week was February 25th, 1942 is when the battle for or of Los Angeles, whatever you prefer, um, actually happened in Santa Barbara, Los Angeles area. If you haven't researched this and you're into like aliens and conspiracy theories, you should really look into it a little bit. Um, I think what caught my eye I mean, I've, I've known about this anyway, but I mean, like, even from the beginning before I did research on it for this stream in particular, I always thought that the way, you know, the glowing of, like, um, these, like, kind of weird lights bulging down from the sky, just the way it looked, and considering I go to Los Angeles a lot, you know, it's, like, literally a couple of hours from me, I can't imagine seeing that you know like visually seeing it so i kind of just put myself in the shoes of the witnesses that night and wow like was it a cover-up was it alien activity so, so the attack itself they call it an attack because um what they claim to have seen which is eyewitness accounts were like somewhat like spaceship-esque sort of th sort of things happening it was really dark late at night um, and obviously no sunlight, just moonlight and these beams of light coming down. So I think that visually, if we're going to play devil's advocate, which you guys know, that's what I do. Um, if it was not alien activity, it could easily have been portrayed as alien activity because you have these weird spaceships hanging out late, dark at night, um, right off the coast, right, right, right on the water, um, with all of these really weird beams of light coming down. And the first thing everyone is going to think is, is it an alien attack? So I think that's where the, the title, the battle of Los Angeles or the battle for Los Angeles, I think that's where that title stems from is people in LA literally thought that they were going to have to fight for their lives. When this occurred, when this happened, um, it was immediately thrown on the Japanese fault. It was it was planned um, accordingly. The government says, the military says, that um, a couple of days prior to this happening in Santa Barbara, there was um, a Japanese sort of raid or attack that had happened. And so they had believed that... Um, after the California coast had fired off shots at the targeted area um, where they believed an invasion may have been happening in Santa Barbara and when the attempt failed was when the Japanese um, basically raided Los Angeles late at night um, making civilians be in fear under the assumption that it was an alien attack. Now some people say it was an alien attack, some people say that it was um, explained by the United States government and by the United States military. It's kind of one of those things that either A, you had to be there or B, you have to make up your own mind for yourself, you know, like, so the panic happens, right? So over the skies of Culver City in Santa Monica is where this was seen. And might I add, I used to live in Santa Monica. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's very condensed. It's well populated. There are thousands of people that live, you know, in just like one little area. So I can't imagine how many witnesses claimed that they had seen this. But um, basically they were saying that there was like 1,400 shells from an anti-aircraft guns um, that had been possibly coming out down onto Long Beach. And it was described as colors coming down like light shafts in sort of a pale orange or a glowing sort of light, okay? And this is what made people freak out because 
they see these glowing beams come down literally to earth from these spacecrafts and of course people are going to assume it's an alien attack um apparently six people did die during this three civilians were actually killed from friendly fire which could mean military was actively on the ground um, while this was happening like uh, they would immediately call in army reserves if this were to happen uh, because usually they are stationed nearby they're the closest to be able to handle something like that that happens on united states territory so army reserves would be called in first so assuming um, what had happened was maybe that happened maybe people came out with um, their guns um, maybe they were just in fear for their own lives three other people actually suffered actual heart attacks during this whole thing happening and unfolding and i mean imagine yourself being there you know what i mean like Anytime I'm researching history or looking in haunted locations, the first thing I say to myself is, at that time, what happened? You know what I mean? How did it happen? And can I place myself there? And how would I have reacted? And in a, in a case like this, there would be sheer panic, right? Sheer fear. Um, Bird Box, um, which is on Netflix. I know there was like some like puns and jokes being made about it. But there was a lot of people committing suicide, uh, random acts of suicide, and like it's, it caused this like panic and frenzy. So I assume that when the battle for Los Angeles happened, people looked like that in real life. There was probably people running all over the place and nobody knew what to do. So to be honest, when I found the statistics that there was only three people that had had a heart attack during that, I was shocked that um, there weren't more. Um, it also said that there was a number of buildings that had been damaged um, due to the anti-aircraft guns. <sighs> Once again, conspiracy theory or aliens? I don't know. There's a lot of other theories, though, that have come up regarding this. So there's claims that the Japanese were launching planes at some sort of like secret base in Mexico, which obviously is not far from Los Angeles. Um, some people say that maybe there was a submarine that was carrying some sort of aircraft. Also, other people say that maybe it was completely staged, um, like from the U.S. military to make it look like something was happening, but it wasn't really happening. Who knows? Um, I guess at the time when this happened, so this is obviously 1942, right? I'm just looking at my notes in front of me. The military couldn't get their story straight they would come out with one thing and then they'd say another and like then they'd say they have to check and like their story kind of kept changing which made a lot of people curious as to like what's the right story and what isn't who is telling the truth and then obviously you know the military the united states army even the government isn't going to come out and honestly say that there is you know alien life happening um, so there was a Army Western Defense Command that was stationed out of San Francisco at the time. Um, and they had said that there were unidentified planes that were over Southern California. The Navy had said that this was an event and result of, quote, war nerves, but it was a false alarm. Um, and then in 1983, which is like, let's see, from 1940 to 1983, 40 years later, um, the military concluded that it was probably caused by a drifting weather balloon, which compared to the battle for Los Angeles doesn't really look the same. Um, you know, but to this day, nobody really knows what happened. And, um, you know, like people reported seeing or believing that there was somewhere between 20 to 200 planes that were swarming that night over like the entire area of Los Angeles. Um, but not a single bomb was dropped. Um, not an enemy fighter was shot and brought down. Um, and so a lot of people just had a lot of questions with that. Like if the Japanese are being blamed for this and they flew planes all the way across the ocean, um, finally get to their destination point, why didn't they drop any bombs on Los Angeles? And if the military is stating that if it was the Japanese and they were active while this was happening, how come they weren't shot down? Now there could be, you could pick that apart, right? You could say, okay, well in the 1940s, we didn't have the best, um, you know, maybe fighting fighter equipment. Um, 
you can pick it apart from a lot of different angles, right? It just kind of depends on which side of the conspiracy you want to sit at, right? But they are to this day called phantoms, basically phantom planes. Um, but a lot of people that witnessed it said that it was nothing like a wandering um, air balloon. And uh, they would like to know, you know, was it alien contact? Were they trying to be threatening, intimidating? Did they not know what kind of planet that they sort of stumbled upon to? There was just a lot of questions that kind of followed. So in the frantic weeks that followed um, after the Pearl Harbor attack, right? This was uh, December 9th of 1941. There was reports of possibly a minor invasion um, in New York, okay? And which caused like the stock to tumble and completely go south. Um, this is when like the West Coast was um, starting to get paranoid after what happened with the bottle for Los Angeles. So you're seeing like people in fishing boats that are getting called out as possibly being aliens and or, you know, some sort of attacker from a different country. Um, basically, everyone was on edge, even when you would see like a warship or a submarine or um, any sort of, you know, boat or ship, people got paranoid thinking that it was going to be once again, either an alien attack or some sort of an invasion from a different country. So apparently for the next few years after this happened, tensions were really high, it was really bad, um, and nobody was getting straight answers, which to this day, people are still not getting straight answers. And, um, you know, so after this had happened in 1941 um, in New York, that's when 1942 is when this Japanese submarine um, emerged off the coast of Santa Barbara. And they do, I, apparently there was like artillery shells that had been um, hurled. And it was kind of like an attack that was no casualties involved, but that was why they were able to blame the battle of or for Los Angeles on the Japanese, which I kind of find sad. Um, you know, like if it was alien contact, like potentially blaming an entire country just so that people don't know the truth, you know, of, of alien life is probably not the way to do it. Um, obviously it's set in stone now though. Um, so, you know, if you look at things like uh, history records, like going to even like the history channels where I was starting to do some of my research because I know that they use really, really authentic stuff. Um, they have this in the history books of it could be alien contact or it was blamed on the Japanese. So this has been written in stone at this point. So, you know, I looked at pictures of this. I'm just kind of going to go off um, of like what I said. Like, I'm just telling you guys what I researched, right? So now I'm going to talk about my opinion and just the photos I've seen. Um, yeah, I would have thought it was alien life, <laughs> you know, like, and even since then, you know, at the time it happened, even though it was in the 40s, there had been no other reports of seeing these like huge beams of light come down, um, seeing as many ships as they did. And if I were to see this today, these pictures, um, I would probably freak out thinking it was like some sort of an alien invasion myself. So, you know, obviously, it's a little bit ironic that it happened in Los Angeles where Hollywood's there and like we all know what Hollywood is capable of creating. I obviously don't think it had anything to do with Hollywood, but it is a little bit um, of poetic, I would say, as to where it happened and how and why. So I would love to hear your opinions on it. Do you think, which side of the conspiracy do you sit on? Do you sit on, um, you know, supporting the military and the government of the United States? Or do you sit on the side that it was probably some sort of maybe not necessarily an alien invasion. You know, I feel like if it would have been an actual invasion, they would have done something, but they didn't. Maybe it was, you know, let's play the other side of the field with um, the aliens. Maybe it was aliens that have never contacted this planet before and they didn't know what they were supposed to be looking for. So of course they had these giant big beams of light coming down to planet because they don't know what's down here, right? They're curious. Um, so I don't know. 
interesting. I would probably sit on the side personally that it was something outer worldly. That's just my opinion though. I would love to hear from you guys what you think. Today is going to be our first official giveaway. So I'm going to do giveaways on Fridays or weekends. I'm going to close this giveaway on Monday night, which is the um, 25th at midnight PST. So you have about three days to enter into it. Um, all you have to do is you have to be subscribed to Ghost Girl Diaries here on YouTube. You have to like this video and you have to comment below which side of the conspiracy that you sit on. And once again, with these giveaways, I'm only going to be shipping giveaways once a month so that I'm not having to constantly go to um, the post office. So um, every week we'll have giveaways, right? And I will ship them all out on the first of every month. So this week will go out next month. Um, technically the full month of March giveaways will not be shipped till April 1st. And that's just because I don't have an assistant at the time and I'm doing all on my own. And girl, I got a lot of stuff going on. So this month we're gonna do, I have some really cool crystals I think that I'm gonna include in the giveaway. Um, and I'm also going to include a K2 meter in the big giveaway with a digital recorder. So make sure you enter below. Um, it's some of our old gear. It's practically brand new. It's barely been used. And um, I'm excited. Maybe I'll pick more than one winner. Who knows? Just comment below. Can't wait to talk to you guys. I will announce the winner um, on Twitter and on Ghost Girl Diaries Twitter Facebook page so make sure you're following it there we will also email you back after we've messaged you on YouTube so can't wait to hear from you guys I hope you have a wonderful weekend and as always I will catch you guys next time bye guys Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night I raise my hand to the fire but it's no use Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true Baby, let the light shine through If you believe it's true Baby, won't you let the light shine through